Hey guys, Gunshy here with another video. So this is the setting video for my ARC solo series. Um, if you are also looking to run a solo run on ARC, I would also recommend these settings on Xbox and PlayStation. Um, you will not have access to some of the mods though, so you will have to do some of your own modifications. Um, and all that. Uh, yeah, but anyways, let's get into this. Alright, so what we're going to start off with is boosting up our difficulty to 1. You can't get it any higher higher on the difficulty there on Xbox, I believe. So you can only bump it up to 1. And then the player damage, structure damage, and dino damage, I'm all going to leave at regular. And basically, the, like this is how much like structures would deal damage. So like spike walls and turrets, um, players and dinos. The lower the amount, the lower the amount of damage they do, the higher, the higher amount. Um, then we got player resistance and dino resistance. This is like how much damage they take. The higher the resistance, I believe, the better. Um, but yeah, I have those set to regular as well. So that way they, it's just normal, normal amount of stuff like it is on survival note. To the stuff that I have started to change. We got our XP multiplier up to 2.0. So that's two times on everything that you can get XP from. Then we got Taming Speed, which is at four times the normal amount. And then we the Structure Cooldown, I believe, I have left alone. Dino Turret Damage, I've left alone. Dino Harvest Damage, I believe, as well. But the Harvest Amount, I've bu bumped up to two. Now on to the Drains. I've left all the Drains alone, but if you're wondering what the Drains are... They're basically like say your food, your water, and your stamina, and your do your dinos food and stamina. Basically, the higher your like the number is for the drain, the faster uh, your food, your water, and stamina would drain as you use them. Say like as you're sprinting, if you bump that up to two times, you're gonna get half the stamina you normally would. And now if you bump it down to like 1.5, you're gonna get double. So. Or if you bump it up to a 0.5, yeah, you should be getting double on stamina. But then the harvest damages and all that we've left alone. My dino count, I have bumped up to 1.5. Okay. Um, this just increases the amount of dinos you can have. Uh, I, on Xbox and PlayStation, you guys cannot go above uh, 1. That is your guys' set limit because that is when you guys come to uh, the point of your computer or what is it? The Xbox can't handle more than the amount that one spawn on or something. I know, it's weird. But you guys can't have any more dinos spawn due to lag. Um, hostess dedicated, te or whatever, the tether distance here. I've had people from console ask me, yo, where is this setting? This is the one I'm looking for. Um, You guys do not get this setting. Console does not get a uh, non-dedicated host tether distance. Um, again, due to lag, lag issues, but if you're on PC and you got, and you can handle it, bump this up to like a hundred and you, and you can run a non-dedicated session with your friends. And then we're going down to here. We got the allow third person camera, but that's normally usually on and crosshairs is usually on as well. Um, we do not have hardcore mode turned on because we don't need it. PvP mode is not on either because we need to be able to kill our creatures for after we breed them, such as the baby dinos and all that. So that way we don't have uh, ones that we don't need. Um, then we have show player location and max difficulty dinos. And for some reason I've noticed when I'm on the island, I'm not getting 150s anymore for some reason. Um, I don't know why I can't I asked people about it on discords and yeah, they don't know why um, I've even tried going and changing it like in the any files and all that doesn't work But this will bump up you the force like the force the max difficulty of the every dino up to 150 um, Regardless of map, but it appears not to be working on maps and now this is the most important thing do not use single player settings do not what it is is single player settings is basically if you're going to use single player settings use it on base fresh wipe don't use custom settings like i am 
because these add their own multipliers over top of the multipliers that you already have set. So I believe there's already a two times XP on there. And if I turn this on using single player settings, my two times XP plus the single player's two times XP is going to make it a four times XP. In which we don't want that. We have corpse locator as well. Um, disable placement, or was it disable structure placement collision? Just so that way we can place things in like walls and stuff, and make it look fancy. Um, allow multiple platforms on floors, connect bases with multiple levels of floors on platforms, adults. That's what it says. Unlimited respects. So, this is so that way, uh, when you're on single player, you're not going to have enough engram points, say on Xbox or PlayStation or any of those, unless, uh, you're on a server that gives you one, like, um, was it a player hosted server? Uh, uh, but if, yeah, if you don't have unlimited respects selected, you can only use a mind wipe tonic once. But if you do have a selected mind wipe tonics, you can use multiple times and PC players. Most of us, I know a lot of people use auto engram and all that. Um, but Xbox players. Yeah, yeah, you're kind of SOL on uh, engram points unless you're on like a Nitrado server or yeah, or unless you're on a Nitrado server, you're going to have to use unlimited respects for that instead so that way you can get everything. I think in Genesis as well, you should be able to buy engram points once you get there. Anyways, uh, allow flyer speed leveling. Make sure you have that enabled so that way you can level up your flyers. So it doesn't take all day to get across the map. Now we are going to jump over to the advanced settings. And as you can see here, all that we have selected here in the top check marks is allow carrying PVP and allow cave building PVE. Um, I don't know if those work. But then if we go down here, I've skipped through kind of all of this. Um, then I have force allow K flyers and then I have override structure placement provisions. So that way if I can place spikes and turrets on platform saddles and like on rafts and all that. So you can, uh, what is it? Set up protection and all that. <laughs> um, we are going to skip past all this PVP stuff and the raid protection and all that. I've not done anything with that. We're going to go down here to the world settings. In which we got... First off here is the breeding settings and the pooping interval. Leave these two alone. Uh, for the sake of God, please leave them alone. That is a way to cause lag if you change these. Like, if you increase them, I believe they'll poop more. Yeah, so... Don't, don't let... Don't have dinosaurs pooping every five seconds. That is the one way to have the game crash. Same with eggs. Um, but mating intervals, I have turned down to 0 0.001. So that way on single player, you only have to wait a couple minutes in between breedings of your dinos instead of a couple days or hours. Then egg hatch speed, I've bumped up to 50. I felt it was pretty nice at 50. It took five minutes for a Rex egg to hatch. Again, T-Rex egg, regular Rex. They were both level 52. Took five minutes. And then the maturation speed I have set up to 100. You might think, oh, wow, that's a little fast. Still took about five hours for those Rexes. <coughs> I believe. I think it actually took closer to about two. Um, but thanks to our baby cuddle interval right here, uh, it uh, we will get 100%. You will get 100% imprint if you're there for all the imprints. On time. Make sure you're there on time. But for the three above it that I just skipped over for no reason. Uh, resource respawn period. I do like to turn that down sometimes. Uh, if I. Uh, seems like things aren't spawning in fast enough for me. But most of the time I leave it turned up to on. Same with the harvest health and baby food consumption speed. I would uh, kind of turn that up. But I do have it set to one. But if you do want to increase it, it will de it will decrease how much food they eat, the babies. And I'm kind of wanting to tempt that up because they clean my out of freaking, uh, what is it, feeding trough on me once during a 100 days run. So, 
Uh, but anyways, now back down to where was it? Cuddle, baby cuddle grace period multiplier. We leave that alone along with the loss imprint quality speed multiplier. We leave that alone as well. Um, baby imprint scale multiplier. I have that set to two, so it's like two times the imprinting scale. Just so that way imprinting dinos makes them a little bit more buffed than they need to be. But anyways, on to day cycle speed and all that. So as you can see here, the day cycle speed, daytime speed, and nighttime speed are all one. I did not change them. This is basic arc uh, time. Then we have spoil time, which I only have set down to 0 0.5 for the spoil time and item decompose time. Corpse decompose timer, though, I have bumped up to one, so that way they do kind of disappear at the normal amount of rate. Uh, and then the no resource radius player and the no resource radius structure I have both set to the normal amount, so no resources will spawn in your base or for a certain like length around your base. If you increase that, I believe it's a bigger distance, and if you decrease it like to zero, you'll actually have things spawn in your base, like the trees and all that that you cut down to build it. So, yeah. Um, my crop growth speed always cha has been changing on me here. I think it's a bug, but usually I have it set to 30, and then I just leave the decompose speed to normal, so that way if it does go, it uh, it just goes. It seems like it's simpler to replant it, because by the time you notice that, yo, it's dead, the plants disappeared. So, all right, that, at least that's my what I've gone through. Um, now, the wild dino stats per level, I always skip because it will change the stat levels of all dinos, and it also, I believe, affects the bosses. Because I, when I was doing my Arc 100 days, I messed with these a lot, the d wild dino stats, so that way I could go out and get like the best Rexes and the best all that for when I did the Broodmother fight. Thing is, is when I went and did the Broodmother fight, I didn't change them back. So when there was wild dino stats per level and a five times on health, imagine what a level 150 Broodmother could do. Yeah, alpha. So I got messed up pretty hard there, and that's where the 100 days end run. But that's why we don't mess with wild dino stats. Uh, feel free to do it if you're up for a challenge. And all that or if you're looking or if you're looking for new dinos make sure you just bump these stats and then change them back before you do a boss fight <clears throat> but anyways on to tame dino stats per level for the health i have it set to one i, I do believe this usually is lower but yeah uh i have it set to one stamina is up to 1.5 so that way you get a little bit more along with oxygen I have oxygen bumped up to 1.5 for uh, specific creatures, like for our, was it the Krylophosaurus in our condition? <laughs> because the amount of cryofluid it gets is based off of oxygen. So, uh, but then for food and water and temp, I've left those all at one. Then weight, I've bumped up to a 2.5, just so that way we do get some weight on them. Then damage I've left alone, and speed I've only put to a 1.25, so that way we can get some extra speed, but we're not insanely fast. Now, the Tame Dinos add per level, I believe I have left alone, and I suggest you do the same, just leave them alone. Um... Tame Dino Stat Affinity, I believe I've left alone as well. The only thing I have changed, and the only reason I've left these two alone is because I'm not 100% sure what they do. I believe Tame Dino's add per level is like what this is taken, like it's this times this. So that way you, like how much the values are and all that. Um, then the Stat Affinity, I think that has to do with something like when you're taming it and it's the level bonuses from taming it. Like, uh, is it your taming efficiency? The better the taming efficiency, this is what multiplies those stats for it. But yeah, but what I've ch the only thing I've changed onward from dino stats per level or tame dino stats per level is player stats per level, which is health at two, stamina at one point five, torpor at one, oxygen at two, food and water and temp both at one. 
then weight I have set to 5, damage is up to 2, and then speed is at 1.5, and temp fort, temp fort I've left at 1. And these are just kind of my own, like, what I prefer. I highly recommend, though, that you do give them a shot, and then slightly, slowly adjust them to fit your uh, things. I know a lot of people like to go in, it's like, oh, uh, 1.5 isn't doing much for me. 1.5, if you bump that up to 15, yeah, it's going to start doing a lot. That's why you only bump up a little bit at a time. That's why I like 2, because I believe 2 times gives me 50 or 25 per level or 20, something like that. 20 or 25 per level into health. Um, But yeah. Then this is our experience multiplier. Now, you know when I bumped up that original one on general up to 2? Now, what this experience multiplier is, is what that two is taken times. So, like, generic, like, when you're just doing stuff in ARC, just gained over time, I still have that set to one. So, that's only, that's actually a two with that two times, along with kill, I have that bumped up to three, which is actually six, crafting two, and all that. So, you, when you're adjusting these, you got to remember what your original, uh, was it, XP multiplier was, because I got that two. And then, yeah. So, like, say if I put a 6 here, that's actually going to be a 12 and all that. So, if you do bump these up, go for it. This is kind of making it more of a what you get XP for better and all that. <clears throat> but, yeah, I have my kill set to 3, my crafting to 2, and my special set to 1.5. Because I just figured crafting and killing do need a little bit more XP. But, anyways... What we have turned on here is spikes will hurt wild damage dinos here. So passive def hurt riderless dinos. So passive defenses hurt riderless dinos, which will make it so that way you will harm riderless dinos and wild dinos, which in single player is very awesome against Therizinos if you've seen my episodes. Um, showing floating damage text, I have that turned on, so that way you can just see how much damage you're doing. That's more of another optional, or up to you, kind of thing. Then I have allow custom recipes. I do usually allow raid dino feeding, and I do turn this down all the way. Because, uh, raid dino feeding just makes it like tit titanosaurs, or only the titanosaur, I believe. I believe the other titans you still can't feed or anything. Like the ones from, uh, Extinction. But this one will make it so that way you can feed Titanosaurs uh, berries, but you will have to force feed them. So that's why I turned down the food drain multiplier all the way down to zero, or as far as it will go. And then the custom recipes affinity I've left at one, along with recipe skill factor and crafting skill. But this crafting skill bonus multiplier I have turned up to two, so that way on items that I have personally crafted with... Uh, like blueprints, they get a little bit of an extra buff on how much they have based off of what my crafting skill is. And we do have a little mod to also help buff that so we don't have to really ever put any into crafting skill, but we can still use this crafting skill. Um, Alright, so what we next have up is our loot quality, which is uh, 4 for the crate loot and 5 for the fishing loot. Um, I've had these set to these forever. I can't even remember why, but I do like the way that they drop. You do get a lot uh, more, like, Mastercraft or Apprentice stuff. But You get a lot of Apprentice stuff, or what is it, the other one, Journeyman. But Mastercraft and Ascendant and stuff like that are kind of rare. But if you're going out and getting uh, red crates, all that, you're going to get a decent amount of Apprentice, or was it? Ascendant or whatever. But yeah. Then fuel consumption speed, I have it set to 1.60 point, or was it 1.601. I have no clue why, but it does take a little bit more for fuel to burn than the basic one. But then for the increased platform structure limit, I have that just bumped up all the way. So that way we get as many structures on the platform as the game will allow us. And then the active event that is something where if you want to like turn on one of the events like the easter or halloween event in your summer world or is it in your solo world uh just search up act 
like how the active event for the name here there's a list of them on the internet and just copy and paste them there and yeah then you could turn on an active event but now for our active mods uh, again xbox players i'm not going to repeat this again i've had so many of you especially xbox players playstation players i don't understand it it's it and it seems like you guys get it you understand oh yeah we're playstation we don't get mods every day it seems like i always have a play like a dude on xbox come by and ask me yo how do i get this mod and then like i have to explain to him like yo xbox don't get mod get mods and it's and it's always like frustrating because the dude doesn't understand and it's always a different person but anyways uh the mods I have active in my series, they are on the collection in the description as well. All the mods I will have. But then if you want to just see here, the load order is a mess. I don't have it set up properly. I'm still working on it. Oh, I got auto endrome, creature finder, no cryo cooldown, crafting skill potions. This is what I was saying about not I'm wearing crafting skills. This will just make it so all the points that we have for a limited time go all into our crafting instead of all the others. Then, like, after five minutes or so, it should go back to normal. Cryo all creatures. This is so that way we can put tita titans and titanosaurs in cryopods. Ultra stacks, just so that way we can have more items. And so we can also, uh, uh, was it prime meats and all that stack. Super spyglass, just for the better spyglass. Uh, structures plus, because they're awesome. Cactus seed mods, so that way... Crack, cactus seed and rare flower mushroom mods, so that way we can just grow that stuff. Then Confucius Orinus, so that way we can have something to help us collect eggs for an egg farm. That's all that... That's the only reason that creature's here. Then Arc Editions, Domination Rex, and Arc Editions of the Collection. Do mind, a lot of these mods are gonna get more as we go through Arc. As you can see here, we're still only on the island, and I'm just messing around on Funyordor. But, anyways, this has been Gunshot Morai signing off. Thank you guys for watching the videos, and I hope you enjoy the settings.